Welcome to Lesson 1.1, Applied Statistics at Bellevue University. This first video is an introduction to statistics. Let's get started with some terminology. This terminology is going to be important to understand all of the examples we'll take a look at moving forward. If you'll notice, I have population and parameter both in the same color in blue and sample and statistic both in the same color in green. The reason that I did that is because we always talk about population with parameter and we always talk about sample with statistic. So what is the difference? Well, a population is the entire body of things that we are studying. So if we were studying students at Bellevue University, then that would be the population. Whatever we're studying about those students, say GPA or marital status or whatever it is that we're trying to learn about the population of students at Bellevue University, that is called a parameter. It's a numerical description that measures whatever variable we are studying. Now, often it's very difficult to talk to every member of the population. In that case, what we do is we take a look at a smaller sample. A sample is part of the population and it is representative. And of course, I'm using this word subset, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with this word, but if this rectangle represents all BU students and it's too difficult for me to talk to every member of that population, I'm going to take just a small subset of that population. This is my sample. I'm going to talk to a smaller group of students and I'm going to study the exact same variable that I was going to study in the population. And I'm going to do that for my sample. And when we're talking about something that we're measuring for a sample, it is called a statistic, not statistics. Statistics is the entire you know, course that we are studying or the um, mathematical area of interest that we're studying. So that's the difference between population with goes with parameter and sample with goes with statistic. Whatever it is that we are studying is called a variable. So whatever the variable of interest is, it's a value or characteristic that changes for each member of the population. Again, if we were talking about GPA, that variable would be the GPA and each student would obviously have their own GPA. Data is the actual values. So the counts, the measurements, the observations that we are recording about that variable. So in that example, that would of course be all of the GPAs that we are um, looking at. And lastly, let's talk about a census. Why is census important? Well, again, we talked back at the beginning about how the population is great, but often it's difficult for us to speak to every member of the population. When we talk to every member of the population, it's called a census. Let's take a look at an example together for identifying the population, the sample, the parameter, and the statistic. So we've got a co consumer advocacy group that wants to survey residents of the Midwest regarding hospital care. So the group mails out 11,450 surveys. A total of 942 surveys are completed and returned. 57% of those 942 surveys say their hospital care was above average. The statisticians um, analyze all of the data and determine that approximately 60% of people in the Midwest are satisfied with their hospital care in the region. So now let's start with what is the population? Again, the population is the entire group of people that we're studying. So looking back at the sentence that tells us about the study, it says the consumer ad advocacy group wants to survey residents in the Midwest. Residents in the Midwest is our population. All of the members of the Midwest is who we are studying. Now, the sample, the sample is part of the residents of the Midwest that are representative of all residents of the Midwest. In this case, again, we have mailed out 11,450, let me change colors. 11,450 surveys and 942 are returned. So a lot of people get confused here and want to use the 11,450 
but we can't actually determine any information from all 11,450. We can only study the 942 that were returned. So that is the sample, 942 households who returned the survey. Now remember the population goes with a parameter. So let's take a look. I'm just going to use white for these two here. We have 57% say their hospital care was above average and then 60% of people in the Midwest. So let's take a look at the difference. If I'm looking at the population, the population was all residents of the Midwest. Notice this says 60% of people in the Midwest. So that is our parameter is the 60% of the people in the Midwest because parameter always goes with population. And now if I look at sample, the sample is out of this group. So out of the group of 942, 57% of those. So that's kind of how we look at that is determining which is which. Whenever you see a title written in blue as this one is, that means I would really like for you to take the time to try the question on your own. I know it's always easy to do when someone has all of the answers and tells you all of the answers, but it's often more difficult when you have to look at a question yourself and determine the solution. So do yourself a favor and when you see those blue titles, press pause, do the question, and then when you're all done, press play to check your work. So for this question, again, we're looking at population, sample, parameter, and statistic. We have 257 residential college students who took part in a survey. They were asked if they'd eaten lunch at the student center. 72% of the students surveyed said yes. After analyzing the results, BU determines that approximately 70% of residential students have eaten lunch in the student center. So the first thing we should do is to determine what is the population that we're studying? So here we have 257 residential college students. Is that the population or is that the sample? Well, we're looking at the total of residential students. So the residential students are the population. The sample is the 257 that we actually spoke to. And sometimes it gets difficult to tell which is which when we're looking at percentages. So as we look at the parameter and statistic, I want you to look for the word of. So as I get to the second sentence, it says 72% of the students surveyed. So 72% goes with the students surveyed. Well, the students surveyed is the sample. So that's going to be the statistic. The other part that we look at says BU determines that approximately 70% of residential students. So 77 70 percent belongs to residential students and that's therefore the parameter. So 70 cent is the 70 percent is the parameter and 72 percent the statistic. I have two more questions for you related to population sample and parameter and statistic. So in this case I have only given you one the parameter or the statistic. So you need to determine the population and the sample and then whether that 82% in this case, because it's the one in pink, um, is a parameter referring to the population or a statistic referring to the sample. So we're looking at a survey that interviewed 679 American air travelers about increased security measures at airports. 82% of American air travelers are in favor of the United States airports using full body scan imaging. So what is the population? Well, really what we're looking at is all air travelers, all American air travelers. So not the 679 that we spoke to, but all of them. Now we did speak to 679, which is representative of all American air travelers. So that's the, going to be the sample. So now let's look at the 82%. Again, I encourage you to look at the of, 82% of American air travelers. Well, that's referring to the population and therefore it's going to be a parameter. Again, here's a question in blue for you. Try this one on your own. Same process as the question that we just went through. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, we're looking at the population we're looking at racial profiling as a means of determining which passengers to search at airport security checkpoints. 
Um, side note, I always am randomly selected to be randomly searched at airport security checkpoints, so apparently I look suspicious. Uh, the population here is, again, we're looking at adult Americans. So how do I know that? Because it says a national telephone survey of adult Americans. So 1,100 or 1,092 is going to be the actual sample. That's who we actually spoke to, but we're looking at adult, all adult Americans, essentially. The parameter or statistic, again, we're looking at that keyword of of 62% of Americans surveyed. So again, because we're talking specifically about those who were surveyed, that's going to be a statistic. The other terminology that we need to understand before we move forward is the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is where we're going to spend most of the first part of our class, which is essentially data that we collect organize, summarize, display. Those are descriptive statistics. If we're finding the average of a sample, if we're finding the you know, standard deviation of something, those are all things that we're going to find. We're going to count the number of things that we're studying. Those are all descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics is what happens when we use our data that's gathered to make predictions about the population. So typically, descriptive statistics are going to be about a sample, and inferential statistics are going to be about the population. Again, we're going to use what we learn about in the sample to make predictions or inferences, which is why it's called inferential, about the population parameters. So this little scenario should look pretty familiar to you because this is the same scenario we looked at before. And right now I want to take a look instead at descriptive versus inferential. So what did we actually determine? What we actually determined is considered the descriptive statistics. And so that's the 57% of the people that are surveyed that said their hospital care was above average. That's based on the sample. The inferential statistics is based on analyzing the data in the sample to talk about what we believe to be true about the population, and that's the 60%. So if you go back a couple of minutes in our video to the example that we worked through before together, if you'll notice this guy was considered the, sorry, 57% was considered the statistic and the 60% was considered the parameter. So that's an easy way to kind of think of it. Up next, we are going to take a look at classifying data.